times like this, we all we need to do is just praise Him. In times like these, what do we need? If you don't know anything else, in times like these, we need a Savior. Come on, put your hands together. Hey, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anger holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, this rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one, this rock is Jesus, the only one, be, be very sure. Some folk need their glasses. So I got two pair up here. I'm going to open up an optical store. The other thing is, you know, we provide water for you, but we want you to take it and drink it all. I was telling them they probably should get those small ones because some of you take these and just drink a little bit and leave it. Come on now, there are folk who need that. So if you're going to take it, drink it, use it up. Amen. Amen. I think that's fair. Yes. Amen. We see what well, we've had a day today. Uh, this is trifecta. We were here 10 a.m. today, every Sabbath. We'll be here again next Sabbath. We have baptism next week. Come on, say amen. At 12 noon, we'll be here. And then 7 p.m., 7.15 p.m., we want to thank our praise team, our AV folk. How many of you had a chance to go online and see the service online? It's at www.libertysda.com org slash YouTube. And I mean, it looks like you right there. It is, it is prime time. I take my hat off to you. You're doing a good job. Appreciate you. Communications, AV, doing a good job. I couldn't have did better myself. Of course, you do have somebody nice and handsome to take a picture of, so I think that may have helped you along. That's probably what it is. But be that as it may, thank you so much. On Monday night, we're going to have our feature is prayer. We're going to have an anointing healing service. Now, I'm going to tell you, I ain't bringing no coats, and I ain't sweet no stuff knocking people down. I don't believe in that. But I do believe that much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer. Lord help you. But bring whoever you will and we're going to stretch our hands to the Lord and we're going to claim that God going to heal and God going to answer our prayer. Then on Wednesday night, what night did I say? Wednesday night we're going to have another child dedication. We had three the other night and we're going to ask you to bring your family and friends whether they members of the church or not. We need to have our, ch our children under the blood. We need to pray. Come on now. They, you need prayer, so you know they need some prayer. So bring them, and we will provide them with a certificate and offer them up to the Lord. They don't have to be a member of any church. Is that fair? And then, of course, food stuff will be available later on for those of you who want to take advantage of that. Take your Bible in hand. Tonight, we want to look at how Humpty Dumpty got put back together again. Now keep me up a little bit. Keep me up. All right. Turn to John chapter 3. What book did I say? Again, those of you who are here for the first time, I invite you, encourage you to not only be auditory, but make sure you write the scriptures down. Acts 17, 11 says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of heart. The process of receiving is not only hearing it, but the more senses psychologists say you engage in a phenomena the greater chance for you to retain it and understand it. Does that make sense? So, so I learned in homiletic class at Oakwood that paper remembers, people forget.
forget. So write the scriptures now. Do what my grandmother and grandfather used to do. They write it down, then go home. They would open up that spiral notebook. And he'd be at one end, she at the other end, and they would read those scriptures. I didn't know it was making an imprint on me. I love the word of God. John chapter 3, starting with 16 and 17. John chapter 3, 16 and 17, maybe you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should not perish but what? Now here's the verse that we sometimes neglect to even repeat and I think it's just as significant. For God sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn the world but that the world through him might be say how humpty dumpty got put back together again. Oh my sister and I uh, will tell you that we grew up on nursery rhymes. Little Jack Corner, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet. Uh, three blind mice and Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't. Come on now. Did you realize that Humpty Dumpty, that story has a theological and moral it talks about our social life. It talks about spiritual ups and downs. Uh, uh, I think Langston Hughes who said, Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod. I think it was Maya Angelou who said, life has been no crystal stair. The Bible said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Bible also said, let him that think he stand, take heed, lest he fall. Can I get your permission? I feel like going swimming today. Can I, can I take you and go, can I springboard with this passage? Dive in and swim in the pool of your cogitation for just a little bit? When you read John chapter 3, the verses we read and prior, what you have is an interpersonal interview. Nicodemus, big shot church fella wanted to have this surreptitious and nocturnal meeting with Jesus. You can read it, John chapter 3 1 through 19 all of its intricate detail but I can sum it up in this sentence for tonight. Humpty Dumpty being put back together acknowledges number one his falling and God's attitude and activity for his restoration. Remember Humpty Dumpty all the kings horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. You know now that I think back when they told me that maybe that's why I couldn't sleep that night. There wasn't too much hope in that. Isn't that right? Because I don't know about you. I know you may not like it but some of us are hard boiled. Some of us are sunny side over. Some of us are light. Some of us are scrambled soft or easy. Whatever we are we ain't nothing but a bunch of eggs done falling off the wall. Come on now ain't that right? We done got involved with persons, places and things but if you were to interview me I want to know how can you put my life back together again? That's what I want to talk about tonight. Number one Humpty Dumpty needed a new beginning. Turn to verse 3 of that same chapter and verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto him Nicodemus verily verily truly truly I say unto thee except a man you Nicodemus except the man you McCleary except the man be what born again he cannot see what the kingdom of God Nicodemus thought he was all scientifically heavy said well how can a man when he's old be born again Jesus said I ain't talking about biology. I ain't talking about anatomy. I'm talking about spiritually being born from above. Look at verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again. In other words, Nicodemus' old way, my old way, your old way has led us to hurt and destruction. Turn to Ephesians. What book did I say? Ephesians. Chapter 2. Come on, let me get a little background on yourself and myself. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 and 2. And you have he quickened.
quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. He taught them the church folk. I know you pastor, got all them letters behind your name. I know you deek. I know you the Ursha. I know whoever you are in the church. He's telling you every last one of us has a resume where we were dead in trespasses and sins. That's why you should not. I said you should not look down your nose at anybody else. Maybe you put a grade on sins, but to God, all sin is the same. It'll take you to hell. Some of us got hand sins. Some of us got eye sins. Some of us got feet sins. Some of us got all the above. But whatever your problem is, Humpty Dumpty, what's made you tripped up and fallen, I want to let you know tonight, unequivocally, irrevocably, God can put you back together again. Look at James chapter 4, text we read earlier. Turn it over to James chapter 4 starting with verse 1 from whence come wars and fightings among you uh oh you mean church folk Hadfields and McCoy's yes sometimes we singing come we that love the Lord but we fighting kicking and screaming one another talk about one uh, talk about one another sticking knives in the back of one another pulling the rug out from one another having meat on one another after the official meeting. Come on, I'm talking about church folk. You wonder why the world ain't making a beaten path to the church. It's because they see the church folk acting up. They say we already messed up out here. Why do I need to go up into the church with all those restraints and still be cutting up against God's will? Look at Romans chapter 3. What book did I say? Romans chapter 3 talking about what we are like our background verse 23 says for all have what and come what short of the glory of God take your neck I don't know if you need some three in one oil or not but swivel it to the left swivel it to the right yeah yeah we talking about you that's right everybody in here is messed up from the floor up if it was not for the grace, the goodness, the mercy of God, where would we be? Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the first part. Romans 6, 23. He said, for the wages, that's your payment, your remuneration of sin is what? Death. Is death. So when you mess around with the wrong people, when you go to wrong places, when you do the wrong thing, Galatians Galatians 6, 7, and 8 said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he what? Also reap. You learned in math, one from one leaves what? Zero. Some of y'all scratching your head. Y'all don't know. How you going to deal with analytical geometry and logarithms and calculus? You can't even deal with one. I don't want you counting my money. <laughs> now you got to realize that when you don't do what God asked you to do sooner or later something going to happen and it ain't going to be good. Look at Romans chapter 7 verse 9 and verse 24 Romans chapter 7 verse 9 for I was a now here's Paul a church founder one who raised up churches all over Asia Minor and here listen to his testimony for I was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and I died look at verse 24 he's so frustrated listen what he said this church brother oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death. Oh, us Humpty Dumpties splattered down on the wall. And here we come with our philosophical analysis. I wonder what made Humpty go up on the wall to begin with. I mean, didn't he know that eggs are metaphysically instable and at risk? You know how happy we get. We try to find out why did they do Look, ladies 
ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about all these whys and ain't come to no answer because the only answer is right here in this book. You can ask me, where did the water go after the flood? Did the chicken come before the egg or the egg before the chicken? They've been asking them kind of questions and my question is, what does it matter as far as my destiny is concerned? Come on now, whether the chicken came first or the egg came first, I'm going to tell you this, I know God came before the chicken and he came before the egg. Can I get a witness? And when I find myself in hot water, I ain't calling on no chicken, I ain't calling no unhatched egg, I'm calling on God. Here's the second point. Here's the last point. The gospel, the good news, is God's statement and his power for our restoration. So what all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't do for Humphrey, God wants to let us know there is a king of kings, there is a lord of lords who specializes in putting broken eggs back together again. Look at verse 5. Come on back to the text. John chapter 3, verse 5, 6, and 8. He says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of the what? Water and of the spirit. That spirit with a big S. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Look at verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is what? That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Look, uh, how many of you know... That if you put a man and a woman in the same room, I don't care if she ugly or he ugly. I don't care if she poor and he poor. I don't care what their background is. God has, I don't care if she speak French, he, he speak Swahili. Come on now, I don't care if she claimed to be a heathen, an atheist, and he's saved, sanctified, filled. You know where I'm going. I don't care what, if you put them in the room, I, I would put money down. I'm not a gambling man. That sooner or later, there's a strong possibility. But if you put two men in there, they can walk around the room. They can climb the wall. They can rub sticks together. They can chant at the Gahunza. <clears throat> Come on now. They can call grandma down in B Biloxi, T uh, uh, Mississippi. They can do whatever they want. But ain't nothing. I guarantee I put all my money on that one. Ain't nothing coming from that. Put two women in there. Ain't no they can rub shoulders. They can put their feet together. They can quote memory verses or they can go wherever they want. But ain't nothing. Come on now. That's why Nicodemus said, Lord, uh, I hear you saying I need to be born again, but, but I'm a grown man. I'm a dignitary in the Sanhedrin. You mean to tell me I got to go back up the birth? No, man, pay attention. I want to let you know that the only way that Humpty can be put back together, it's got to be an act and a will of God. It's not my church joining the church. Come on now. Churches have their own hoops. And they got their own springboards. And sometimes in churches, if you know certain people, you can get in. But if you want to get in the kingdom of God, if you want to be put back together again, you've got to be born again. How many of you been to the airport? Especially since 9-11. Now before 9-11, you used to go up there talking, telling old jokes and all kind of stuff. But, but now you know TSA don't play that. So you go, when you be up there playing around, but then when you get close proximity, you start to, don't be talking me about no bombs and don't be talking me about no matches because you'll miss your flight if TSA hear that. They'll say, come here, let me talk to you just a little bit. Well, I'm in a hurry. I got to get to in these times of Bible and prayer. I got to catch this. Yeah, well, you won't be catching that flight right now because we like to talk. What were you talking about? Bombs and matches and explosions. Come on, are you listening to me? Oh, I was just telling a joke. Well, come on, tell us the joke right here, right now. 
Amen. Now, if we got enough sense to know that you got to toe the line, you got to batten down the hatch, you got to get your mouth together and don't misbehave because if you acting funny, they'll say, come in, sick them. And you'll be on the phone talking about uh, Pat McClary. Uh, I was on my way to the In These Time Bible, but, uh, but I got detained by the TSA. God has his TSA. And you can't make it to heaven with any and everybody. That's why you got to cut string with certain people because they ain't trying to go to heaven. You can't go everywhere because it ain't going to take you to heaven. Come on now. If you want to go to heaven, you got to be born again. Do you understand that when Adam and Mother Adam messed up, that God basically said the same thing in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He was basically saying, you need to be born again. By the time you get to Hebrews, what book did I say? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and verse 12. He's repeating what he wrote in Jeremiah 31, the new covenant. So what he started with Israel, they, they all the Lord has said, we want to do it. All the Lord has said, we will do. And less than 40 days later, they were what? Come on, Aaron. We don't see Moses. Let's go on back. And you know, isn't that something? Now, you better check yourself in the mirror because I'm getting ready to talk about you. <laughs> While Moses is down there leading them, oh Moses, you done brought us out here to die. You done brought, why didn't you just leave us in, in Egypt and leave us up? Soon as Moses away, now Moses is the best pastor they done ever had. And in that way some of us are. When you got a pastor in your face trying to do God's will, oh but, yeah, I know God said that but. But soon as he leave and the new pastor, and you putting the butt-itis on the new pastor. Now the, the former pastor, Oh, he was the best pastor we ever had. Come on now, talk about you. I'm going to talk about you. Well, here, here Moses has brought them down. And by the time Israel is up and down with God, in and out with God, here Paul in Hebrews chapter 8 says, but in, uh, in these last days, God going to make a new covenant. He's quoting from Jeremiah. Here's one of the things he said. He said, I am going to put my laws in your mind and in your heart. That's the same thing. You can't be born again by hocus pocus. You can't be born again by mind over matter. You can't be born again by behavior modification. You can't be born by locking yourself up in a monastery. Come on now. You are born again by saying, Lord, I'm guilty. When you see those fellas or those girls and you see the police and they're doing like this, come on now. I'm not talking about false arrest. I'm talking about those folk who've been caught red-handed. What are they saying? I'm guilty. And that's what God wants you to do. Just say, Lord, I'm guilty. Isn't that what David said? Lord, I was shaping an iniquity. Born in sin. Lord, I'm guilty. The difference between David David and Saul was that Saul was full of pride. Saul was arrogant. He was head and shoulders above everybody, but he wasn't humble. David, in hot passion, committed cold-blooded murder. But the Bible said David is a man after God's own heart. Why? Because David had enough sense to say, Lord, I'm guilty. I trip myself up. I fall on the mercy of the court. Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, you don't know the God I serve. When I done messed up so many times. In fact, if some of y'all knew, did a background check on me, y'all call for my credentials. But I'm so glad God is not a snitch. I'm glad God ain't a stool pigeon. I'm glad God don't turn state's evidence on me. And you better be glad he ain't told you on you, right? I could see it now, boy. You see God come down here and he said, Pastor McClary, after you done walk by, let me talk to you. Yeah, let me talk to you about Sister P Come on now. And he had some stuff to talk about, wouldn't he? But God ain't into embarrassment and exposure. God is into empowerment and giving you a second chance. 
By the time you get to verse 13, come on back to the text. Here, verse 13, John chapter 3, verse 13, he said, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. See, it, it's not by your might, nor by your power. Only, only God can go up and come down. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. See, it's a God and man process. God got to deal with intelligent beings who he's given free will. And I'm going to say it again. It bears repeating. I believe that God is the invisible member of the temptations. <laughs> And I believe that God wrote the song. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. Oh, you take that to the bank and you cash that check. That does something for me because I know I, I, I messed up from the floor up. Oh, I may have a whole lot of letters behind my name. I may use the king's English, but the fact of the matter is I ain't nothing but Humpty Dumpty. I done tripped myself up. I'm a victim of my own vices, but I'm saying, Lord, help me. Look beyond my faults and do something for my needs. It's grounded in love. It's grounded in what, everybody? Grounded in love. Go back to the text. Here it is, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should not perish but have everlasting life. By the time you get to 17 for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be what? Say he came for messed up people. When you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 Paul says it so eloquently so profoundly he says the love of God constrains me. Come on, that's what keeps me coming back. That's what keeps me with Queenie. That's what kept me with my mama after my mama done whipped my behind and then put her arm around and said, you know I love you. I was trying to, I wanted to say, but you got to be careful what you say back in those days. I wanted to say, well, mama, if you love me, why did you beat me back then? Then she would have probably taken me to the test. To whom I love, I chased. Come on now. Faith is both intellectual and it is volitional. In other words, faith is always rooted in knowledge about God. And it's also, it asks us to make a decision about God. So when you read verse 18 down to 21, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19 says, this is the condemnation. Come on now. That light is come into the world and men love what? Rather than light because their deeds were evil. They rather go to the party than give in to God. They rather hang with this brother or that sister than rather make God a priority. They'd rather put every person, place and thing before God. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. There's the text. You read it, put it down, and read it at your earliest convenience. John, in his prologue, talks about the Logos. He says, in the beginning was the Logos, or the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It sounds almost just like Genesis chapter 1. Bereshith Elohim bara. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's John's way of saying the one who walked in Galilee and Judea, the one we rubbed shoulders with, the one who spoke to us, the one who touched us and healed us, is the same one who stood out on space, didn't to come to the law of gravity, who said, let there be light, and there was light. If God has all that majesty, all that power, Paul says he got the same power to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. 
He closes up in verse 12 when he says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, I'm not against church membership. I'm a pastor of a church, but I have a problem when people stop and make the church an end in itself. The church is just a portal. It's an instrument. It's a means. It's a bridge to get to Jesus. But when you replace Jesus with the church, with your doctrines, with your teaching, with your liturgy, now we got a problem. Because when I call on your liturgy at the midnight hour, your liturgy don't show up and do nothing for me. But when I call the EMS, the eternal merciful Savior, when I put in a 911 to heaven, heaven shows up. My soul to be in glory finds the mercy seat. So make sure that in all your Sabbath keeping, all your vegetarianism, all of your denominationalism, that it leads you to the one who can put Humpty back together again. I told it before and I'll say it again. They play the songs over and over on the radio. I'm going to play this one again. Two girls were having a disagreement. Got real heated. Uh, the first girl said, it is so. The other girl said, taint so. First girl tried to add a little weight to it, said, yes, it is so, because my mama says it's so. Second girl shrugged the shoulders, then looked up at the girl and said, still taint so. The first girl, oh, she's upset now. She got to add a little earnestness to it and all the gusto she could muster. She said, it is so, because what my mama says is so, is so, even if it taints so. up. <laughs> when you read Romans chapter 8, what book did I say? Romans chapter 8, start with verse 29 and you read down to 39. Here's what it says. It basically says the same thing. The devil says it taints so. Other unbelievers say it taints so. All the guilt that you can remember, it taints so. But I'm like the first girl that says it is so even if it taints so because God says it's so. In fact, when you read it, it says, if God be for me, who can be against me? So as we stand to our feet tonight, I want to invite you to be back tomorrow night. Another plank in the word of God to set the captives free. I want you to know that God is calling you to a high and lofty destiny. Here's my question to you. Do you want to be put back and kept together? I know you've had some damage in your life. I know you've been turned upside down and inside out. Uh, family members done mistreated you. Uh, folk in your neighborhood don't even know you, but they talk about you. You've had tragedy in your life. The devil has come in disrupted your life and you don't know if you can make ends meet but I want to let you know that there are a lot of stories up in here. Only the names have been changed to protect the guilty but God has put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I'm a witness. Do we have any more witnesses in here? Yeah. Oh, there are witnesses in here. I know you look like you about to fall off the end of the world. Like it just it doesn't matter for me to go on but I want to tell you tighten your seat belt God's getting ready to do something for you and it can start tonight oh I want to sing that song we sang the other night how to reach the masses men of every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key and I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me but before we sing it some man woman boy or girl you heard the word. You want to accept the Lord Jesus as your savior. You splattered down in life on the floor and you want to be put back together again. If there's some brave soul who wants to believe the Lord for all that he can do for you, raise your hand. 
or come on now wherever you are or if you want to come back to the Lord you wandered far from him as a prodigal son and you want to come back to the Lord and you want to start it right here and right now raise your hand wherever you are come on singers as we get ready to close tonight we'll see you tomorrow night how to reach the masses men of every birth for an answer Jesus gave the key and I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll do what I'll draw all men come on join them in say it again. There are glasses here if you need them. If there was a night you should have missed, let me let you in on a secret. You should have missed tonight. But I'm so glad you stayed by. I hope you understand that as you look in the mirror, you may see Humpty Dumpty. Mama. May see, seem hopeless. But God specializes in putting ungodly sinners back together again. That's what this is. This is, a, this is the tent of people who are messed up from the floor up, but God's got us in his rehabilitation process. Father in heaven, take us home safely. Bring us back again tomorrow night as we hear another bit of the rights and privileges of the new covenant. May we realize that we've got a heaven to gain, a hell to shun, that we should not focus so much on the horror and hurt, but how you help and give us hope. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you Amen. want to shake my hand, introduce yourself. Come on up. God bless you. Look for you tomorrow night. Invite, invite, bring, bring, and be nice, be nice.